Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this RedGamingTech.com video, we're going to be discussing as well as analysing tech news, which as usual has popped up in the past 24 or so hours. Hopefully, you're having an amazing day. We have lots of news to get through in this video. I'm going to start things out though with Sienna Cichlid, perhaps better known as Big Narve, Narve 21, RDNA 2, RX 6000, I think you get the point by now. Uh, we actually have several updates for this GPU thanks to, well, several patch notes as well as a slide, assuming it's genuine, that has popped up on the internet. But first, let's have a quick recap of RDNA 2 slash Big Narve. We believe that there are several variants, Narve 21, 22, and 23, and AMD have officially confirmed several things. Basically, this uh, next generation architecture will support all of DirectX 12's highlights, including, but not limited to, mesh shading, variable rate shading, and, of course, perhaps the most uh, infamous one at this point, hardware-based ray tracing. AMD have even put out a hardware-based ray tracing demo, allegedly running on an engineering sample RDNA2 GPU, although they encoded it at just 30 FPS. I actually manually scrubbed through it, and um, yeah, it didn't quite hit 30 FPS locked. Um, I didn't actually have my frame rate tools available at that point because I was doing it on my laptop, but uh, there were certainly quite a few missing frames. It's hard to know, though, whether or not that was because of encoding or perhaps software issues, or perhaps because it was early silicon. I've personally heard that the uh, ray tracing performance is about the same as Turing, but uh, whether that's true or not, I don't know. Some people have said it's a little bit better than Turing. Other people have said it's a little inferior to Turing. So I'm going to say it's about on par, but uh, I would take that with truckloads of salt, to be honest with you. And obviously, NVIDIA are heavily pushing Ampere, which is supposed to be much better. But either way, we've also seen a benchmark which leaked. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if it leaked accidentally on purpose by AMD to keep some of the hype up. And this is in a VR benchmark. And if the RTX 2080 Ti was running at stock, the um, big Narve Silicon would outperform it by about 30%, which is actually pretty damn fantastic given once again that the, um, well, silicon was early, which means that it's not optimized in terms of hardware or the software side of the equation. And we believe it's around 500 mm square and also contains uh, 80 compute units. All right. So now we know all of that stuff, what's changed? Well, several major patch notes have popped up and it seems, and most of this, uh, stuff has been discovered by Kamachi and also the website Foreignx, um, and these are primarily on the free uh, desktop.org website, where obviously um, uh, developers, including the engineers over at AMD, communicate with one another. And what we have here is one note which says AMD GPU underscore AMD KFD underscore GFX underscore B10 underscore 3, which is, of course, the second generation of RDNA. Um, and then we have a couple of other entries. So one of them states NV underscore Sienna underscore Cichlid underscore P underscore A0 equals 40. And in another um, set of uh, patch notes, we can, oh, sorry, uh, entries, we can see uh, Narve 10 which is, uh, let's say, the RX 5700, 5700 XT. It's known as 1. And then all the way underneath that, we have Narve 21 underscore P underscore A 0 equals 40. And then also the website, uh, most of that stuff was discovered by Kamachi. But then uh, Foreignx.com also did some digging. And according to them, this upcoming GPU has VCN 3.0 capabilities, which include, which is obviously for video coding, and DCN3 for display. And it appears like uh, this is not going to make the merge window in August, so most likely this does indicate that 
uh, these GPUs will launch after August, which once again matches up with the fact that we believe the cards are going to launch late this year. Either way, um, one of the engineers at AMD said the following, Sienna Thicklid is a GPU from AMD. This patch set adds support for it, including power management, display, interrupts, GFX, multimedia, the new register headers are really big, so I haven't sent them all to the list. And you can view the patches, including the register headers on the following get branch. Um, so there are several questions, of course, we can bring to the table. Uh, but the most obvious is, does that mean that this is a replacement so narvo 21 is essentially going to be replaced by this name by like, let's say 40. well it's hard to know at this point and it's really weird because amd have been getting very good at obfuscating uh pci uh, ids as well um which makes it an absolute bugger sometimes to get data uh, and amd have been getting really good at kind of doing that recently but before we move on with this particular topic, it's also worth noting that a Twitter user, Lakuza, um, also put out an image for Sienna Cichlid. And uh, as you can see, it's a very fishy image. Uh, perhaps this is fake. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if it was fake. But um, anyway, it states that it is a dual pipe GPC, which supports two GFX pipes, each handling one GFX Q and two asynchronous compute engines with four pipes each handling four compute queues so essentially that um is looking like it's almost kind of like an overview of some of the elements of the gpu of course we don't have exactly an in-depth rundown of it they've also stated that it has advanced uh, clock and voltage control and also uh the gf uh, the graphics ip excuse me has been updated to 10.3 and supports gddr6 memory which is not really surprising what we do believe is narve 21 um for consumers like gaming so on that will still be on gddr6 memory some of this stuff does match up in terms of what i'm hearing um for one gfx sorry i was about to say gfx 10.3 i just realized it proves better say rdna2 has significantly better compute but obviously i don't know the specifics unfortunately this is just things i've been hearing from multiple people and You've got to remember that a lot of the changes here are things that Sony and Microsoft would have asked for. There are customizations that each company would have also added into the equation, but um, it's not it's not a coincidence. Let's just put it that way. That DirectX 12 Ultimate kind of was hinted and then we started to see AMD confirm that they support all of this stuff. Basically, I've said this before and I'll say it a billion more times, AMD are heavily influenced by their partners, which of course in the case of, um, in this instance, are both Sony and Microsoft and they are both free of course to also optimize the silicon for their own custom implementations which i do know that both have done i've mentioned that a couple of times in the past i will be super curious to see how uh, rdna2 does compete against ampere when we finally see both architectures launch and the final piece of news for today is intel because we have a very interesting update for intel and their ice like range of processors and this was actually discovered by tim apisak on twitter although several other websites have also contributed to this as well and this is an ice like processor which of course is based on the sunny cove architecture and it features 24 cores now i know 24 cores is not as many as well let's say rome can bring to the table but it is still pretty impressive because it appears to be an engineering sample now we don't know the highest core count we will see on the cooper lake architecture we don't know if it's going to be 28 which is the same number as what we have in Pearly, which is of course Skylake based. But either way, Sunny Cove 
um, does feature a pretty nice IPC uplift. We see uh, around 18%, of course, does depend heavily upon the workload. And we are certainly not certain if that makes any sense as to the clock frequencies either because the CPU here is running at just 2.2 gigahertz but can boost up to 2.9 which I'm sure you'll agree is not exactly rip roaringly fast but what's rather interesting about this though is this particular uh, chip was tested on a C621 motherboard and is actually being listed um, as such uh, in uh, the CPU Z and um, the reason that's of interest is because this same chipset um, was for the Xeon W-3275 uh, series of uh, processors and um, we saw motherboards uh, sporting this chipset such as the Asus ROG Dominus Extreme and I believe EVGA also put out a motherboard or two for supporting these and so on and so on. So this potentially could be some type of workstation platform that Intel have been testing and obviously does indicate that their 10nm process is starting to mature. Uh, a day or so ago I did cover the fact that uh, Intel's upcoming roadmap is looking to be very impressive in terms of IPC gains from one architecture to the next architecture and comparing Skylake against Ocean Cove we could be seeing up to an 80% IPC gain which is obviously pretty damn impressive but I will be curious to see what Intel does in terms of the core counts and clock frequencies as well and well, I don't really need to tell you this, but uh, AMD have been, well, just absolutely on a rampage recently. And uh, obviously with Zen 3, which is waiting in the wings for later this year, or possibly early this year, depending on whether we're referring to data center or uh, Ryzen desktops, Intel are just continuing to face a lot of pressure. I do hope, however, that Intel can kind of pull it back as fast as possible. Uh, simply because I want as much competition in the marketplace as possible because at the end of the day it just benefits us as customers um, but yeah but um, I think I'll actually finish the video off with one final story although I'm pretty sure most people know about this by now and that is that Sony have decided to postpone the PlayStation 5 event which was scheduled for the 4th um, which is obviously a Thursday, but because of the, let's say, world events that are going on right now, numerous world events, uh, Sony have decided to not host the event. Um, I won't want mention what those world events are, simply because, well, quite frankly, I don't want YouTube to smack me on the head with a mallet, but uh, we all know what has been going on. Uh, either way, Sony believe that it's not the right time right now for celebration and for people wondering there is no update to when the event will take place uh, in the future. My gut feeling is it's probably not going to be you know like six months into the future or anything ridiculous. At the end of the day they are still needing to announce lots and lots of stuff and obviously this year is starting to run out really quickly. It's kind of crazy that it's already June. It's like halfway through the year um, but ultimately I suspect that we're probably going to see a one or maybe two weeks delay at most for the event. And we also know that, of course, there are lots of uh, conferences which will be uh, kind of live streamed in the not too distant future. Microsoft as well as uh, the, their E3 coverage have a very interesting presence planned for hot chips, which if memory serves is in August. And hot chips, they're going to be apparently going deeper into the architecture of the next generation Xbox, which I'm very much looking forward to seeing what they actually uh, pull out there. I'm very curious to see what we actually learn in terms of hardware customization on the console itself. But hopefully you've enjoyed the video. The normal stuff if you did, like, share, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.